So I just finished my last semester of teaching music theory at Michigan State University, and this semester I was teaching a music theory for non-majors course. Part of this class that I had them do was a final presentation where I asked them to engage in music in ways that maybe they hadn't done before um, and give just a short presentation. This presentation was only meant to be about eight minutes long and uh, they could really explore any type of music that they liked. Um, they just had to incorporate some sort of element from the course material um, in some meaningful way. Um, and I've all, I also asked them to make some sort of like claim, analytical claim, and some sort of interpretive claim to, to maybe guess why they did, what, if there was any meaning to something or anything like that. Um, and a few observations. 50% of the music chosen was by a non-white composer. About 25% of the music was classical in some way. Um, and what I mean by that is, is for example, uh, there were some contemporary classical pieces. Um, it depends on how you define classical, to be honest with you. Um, I, I will say the oldest piece was by Debussy, but uh, the, you know, uh, there were also people like Granger and whatnot. About 25% of the pieces were, I would call, classic rock, um, something between the 60s and 80s in that kind of rock genre. And then 50% of the pieces, I would say, didn't fit in any sort of box, aesthetically speaking. Um, and so what I mean by that is presentations included things like EDM, pop, musical theater, jazz, classic rock, electronic music, band, um, modern orchestral, classical, folk, funk, and whatever you call Jacob Collier. Uh, four continents were also represented. Without prompting them to be diverse, they were diverse because guess what? The students were diverse. Student-centered teaching that is inclusive doesn't mean you have to be an expert in all of these different styles. It means giving your students the critical thinking skills and research tools to be able to study the music that they want while also allowing for flexibility in what the final goal is. Classical music wasn't erased by teaching this way. It was still represented even though Mozart and Beethoven weren't present. I think calling classical music white supremacist is perhaps a misnomer in the sense that it pisses off a lot of people in the classical music community because they see something that they really care about as being erased. But that's not really what we mean when we say classical music or academia is white supremacist. What we're saying is, is that when we are expecting people to spend so much time learning about something that doesn't fit with their own experience or own culture, we're basically enforcing white whiteness onto people who might have different interests. Um, and I know that you're probably thinking, well, you know, they're in music school, they should learn about these things. And I'm like, of course, they should learn about these things. I'm not, I don't think anybody is saying that people shouldn't learn about Mozart or Beethoven or anything like that. Um, although maybe that we should stop teaching about Wagner um, other than, you know, him being a racist anti-Semite, but that's a, a whole different story. They're all racist anti-Semites, quite frankly. Um, but, you know, at the same time, um, what we are saying is, is that I think it's really important that we take a look in the mirror and ask ourselves why, if a if student wants to study music, we do not have, outside of a couple few exceptions, the option for them to learn about music in a way that excites them. The reason I and other members of my community have such a big problem with the way that we teach classical music and the way that we teach music in general is that it assumes a lot about the incoming class of students. It assumes that every student has the same wants or needs, which we know isn't true. Now I hear someone in the comments saying, well, it was a non-majors class, so I mean, you could teach them whatever you wanted. And you're not wrong. That is definitely true. That is one of the reasons why I was able to teach this class this way. Um, and quite frankly, uh, they did not choose, like the people who are in this class, um, have you ever considered that maybe they didn't study music in college because they 
didn't feel represented in, in, in that setting. They didn't take a Topics Beatles course or music appreciation. They took a music theory course. And I know that many people were expecting something different than what they got. But even the students who were the classical music enthusiasts in my class were excited to be able to apply other musics that they liked to their to their own, you know, to their own work. Um, and in one example, um, the one person who brought in classical music examples every single every single week um, talked about EDM, and it was super fascinating. By the end of the semester, my students were able to do formal analysis without part writing. We talked about cadences, but not really within the context of five to one. I mean, we I taught it, but that's not really how I was thinking about cadences. I talked about it more about how how do phrases end. Can you identify when the phrase ends and the next phrase begins? We didn't talk about really, we didn't, I don't even know if I mentioned counterpoint, um, but they were able to clearly identify what tonic was um, in different ways. Would my students be able to pass theory one? I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, I didn't teach theory one to them. I taught them music theory in a way that would be helpful for what their wants and needs were by letting them pick the type of repertoire to engage with. But I ask, would you be able to, can you tell me that by the end of your theory one course, um, that your students would be able to pick a piece of music that they love and be able to fully give a presentation that you'd be happy with? Because I gather they probably wouldn't be able to because the limited scope of a theory one course, um, which quite frankly, if you look, um, Kofi Agawu actually says this really wonderfully that, you know, these courses are meant to teach basic musical literacy. And by the end of the semester, my students got basic musical literacy. Maybe they don't have the harmonic practice of uh, 17th and 18th and 19th century European music. Um, there were examples of this. I definitely used them, but they, by the end of my semester, they were able to present music in a way that they were excited about. You know what else? My students reported that this was one of their favorite courses that they'd taken. Um, and they said it's because I didn't try to teach them music history. I taught them how to engage with music that they really cared about in a critical way. I taught them critical thinking skills. And in many cases, one student even told me that these skills were applicable to their other courses. Anyways, I just finished my last semester at MSU uh, uh, of coursework. Uh, just gonna be working on my dissertation now. Um, if you liked me talking about, you know, how I think about teaching, how particularly diverse students, and how I think about diversity, um, please let me know in the comments. Let me, you know, reach out to me. I really would love to hear if you disagree. Uh, I promise you, I'm not deleting your comments as much as one person likes to think. Um, and uh, I really do encourage debate. Um, I, I really do. Um, so anyways, love you. Have a good day. By the way, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, share it, do all the things. It really is helpful. I promise you I didn't, I'm not just asking because I need the clicks. It is helpful. Um, I want to keep doing this. Um, also, if you haven't seen my live stream that I've been doing on Sunday nights, um, last week I made Mac, uh, kind of like a mac and cheese, that feta mac and cheese tomato thing that's been popular on TikTok. So um, anyways, keep an eye out for those. It'll be every Sunday evening um, around seven-ish. So 